Yes, well, I've been told that this report is likely to be even more explosive than any of us could have imagined. For instance, I've been told that 75% of the cases reviewed fall into the serious or most serious categories. So that is deaths or serious harm. And of the 23 original families that the senior midwife Donna Ockenden first started looking at, they all fall into the most serious category. This is mothers and babies, many of them who died or were left harmed. And as you mentioned there, staff have come forward in the past two weeks to say that they still don't think that the maternity services here are safe. Now, the, uh, the trust itself said it couldn't comment, that they will comment more tomorrow. But I've been talking to a family whose son was left profoundly disabled and then died at the age of 15 months. Now, he doesn't fall into these numbers. He's not in this review because he was born after the review started. And I must warn viewers that some of the testimony in my report is upsetting. because of the sheer volume of cases that they've had to look at, mothers and babies left harmed or who have died. 
Now Channel 4 News has learned that the review has found that between 2011 and 2019, 40% of stillbirths and 43% of neonatal deaths were not investigated. And we've been told the trust will be required to take 60 immediate actions. It all started with Rhiannon Davis and Richard Stanton. They've fought tirelessly to find out why their daughter died and why there were so many others. Rhiannon and Richard's daughter, Kate, lived for just a few hours. Her distress, not noticed in time, Rhiannon not listened to when she tried to say something was wrong. And Channel 4 News has also learned that tomorrow's Ockenden Review has found that within weeks of Kate's birth, there were two other cases so identical that you could have swapped the names. But Ronnie's death is not included in the review. He was born outside the timeline. Given the case that we're acting on, which has happened years after the, um, the Ockenden inquiry was opened, there is a feeling of pessimism that um, while changes are going to be recommended and we hope that improvements will be made, that's certainly what should happen. There may be historic problems that, that keep recurring with dysfunctional cultures, staff shortages and then a failure to acknowledge mistakes. You're talking about an NHS trust that is quite frankly notorious now for poor care, for a lot of baby deaths, for some maternal deaths. How confident did you feel when you were going there? We knew that it wasn't in a great place, but our other choice to, to give birth to Ronnie was in Wrexham. Wrexham. And we were told that Wrexham was crawling with COVID, rife with it. So we weighed up our options and we thought, We'd been to Telford and seen the new unit and... And it looked lovely. They had all yeah. this new equipment that they put a lot of money into. Um, the unit was really nice, you know, it was a clean environment. When you see, like, news articles about it and that, you think, wow, like, horrendous. But at the same time, you think, well, it must be getting better. But a shiny new unit wasn't, after all, enough to prevent this most catastrophic of outcomes. Now, this review will require changes to be made, not only here at Shrewsbury and Telford NHS Trust, but across maternity services in England. But I must say that over and above all that, this has to be a testimony to those families who have fought tirelessly for so long to learn why their babies or their mothers or their wives died or were left harmed at the maternity services at this hospital. Victoria, thank you so much for that. Now, if you've been affected by any of the issues in that report, go to channel4.com support, where you can find a range of places to seek information and, of course, help.